Greetings and welcome to another model building workshop. And I think we've hit the 100th video of our series. And today we're going to look at the Schwerer Panzer Spavagen SD KFZ 232 8 rad for eight wheels. That's a mouthful for a heavy armored car <laughs> with a radio. This is the Tamiya kit. It's been around for a while, and this is a lot of fun to build, as most of their kits tend to be. As a typical booklet instructions here, with a long story here, which, <laughs> I mean, it's a very detailed and in-depth story. It almost starts with the beginning of the universe, but anyway. <laughs> so it talks about how these armored cars have developed. And let's see, armor thickness was about 14.5 millimeters in the, in the front, with up to like 30 millimeters in the last production types, and like 8 millimeters in the sides. So it was very th thinly armed, and it had a 20 millimeter gun with a, and the 7.62 machine gun on the side here. And it had the, uh, the FU-11 radio with this massive antenna here. So this was the eyes and the ears of the, uh, the Panzer divisions in the early uh, Blitzkrieg part of the Second World War. So they began delivery to units in 1938. And they slowly began to uh, make their presence known on the battlefields, you know, in 1939. So it had, let's see, crew of four men. There was a commander, a gunner, you know, and the driver. And this had a driver in the front and the back, so it could go either way, which is kind of nice. They said it was a little uh, complicated, you know, with this design because you had the cannon in here. So you had the crew trying to operate a gun and operate a radio, and it got to be a little difficult to do both. So eventually they ended up going with the 263 here, which is strictly a radio car. And then they moved on, it's here somewhere. Let's see what it is. The 234 series ended up taking over in the armored car fighting role. I believe that kit's available by Atelieri and probably Dragon and some others. So let's have a look at the instruction book here, huh? Because it's quite the quite the book. But it's pretty straightforward construction, you know, you've got you have all of the uh, suspension to put together and the chassis, which was not painful if you're just careful and the pieces tend to fall together in the typical Tamiya fashion. Even though it looks very complicated, you just take a breath and kind of work your way through it. It's not too bad. And we have turret assembly. There is a crew figure for the Blitzkrieg period. There he's got the beret. And you get the final assembly process with the radio, antenna, and that equipment. Which looks fiddly, but it wasn't too bad to put together, at least not in my experience. And it does come with a lot of uh, optional gear you can put on this thing. Especially if you're doing one for North Africa. And it has a plethora of markings. Although this diagram is a bit of, of an eyesore to try to sort that all out. But it gives you a lot of the uh, the typical units that were common with Tamiya kits, and still are. You know, so you get like the uh, the first SS division, the first Panzer. Oh, you do get some weird ones in here actually. Take it back. There are some different ones in here. So you get the first Panzer division, which is with the leaf emblem. You 
get the uh, the war sign, which is the upside down. Actually, it's the peace sign here. That was the war sign. It's supposed to be the third Panzer division. Not so sure about that. Yeah, I think there's some issues here with the third and the fourth Panzer division. As far as I knew, the fourth Panzer division was the you turn the peace sign upside down. I think. Is this one? No, I guess that's the. I guess it is the fourth. Anyway, you may need to do some investigation on those markings for accuracy. You've got the 15th Panzer Division, which is uh, Africa Corps. You have the first SS, as it was in the Balkans, invasion of Greece. You've got the uh, Gross Deutschland Division with the helmet. And then you've got the uh, the G and K for Panzer Group Guderian, Panzer Group Kleist, and a few uh, Kleist. And you've got a few um, divisional type uh, unit emblems, motorcycle units, and reconnaissance units. And you get a good painting guide for the uh, the crew. Although they only give you one one crew member in the like I said in the parade, the early war period. And of course, I opted to do something different. Surprise, surprise. I looked at a, a squadron signal book, and I ended up really liking this this marking combination from the 7th Panzer Division during Operation Barbarossa in 1941 in Russia. I thought that was busy but neat looking, <laughs> so I thought that was fun. So it's a big Ahmed car. And it's, like I said, a lot of fun to build. A lot of little details you can pick out when you're dry brushing. Lots of little things here and there to, to play with, with a paintbrush. To imagine this would be fun to camouflage and you know, maybe do a snow camouflage or something like that. But they found out, as I mentioned, that in, in combat, while well, the gun was pretty decent, um, you know, the armament was, was awfully thin on these things. And the other problem they were running into, like I said, is that there's so much, it was very busy inside the turret and the fighting compartment that, you know, like I mentioned, you know, they went for a different armored car for the radio and they went to other armored car designs for, for combat. So basically the uh, production of these things ended in, yeah, January 1942. So they were in production from 1937 to 42 and they made 1,235 of them in that five year span. You know, and then they moved on to different designs. So it had some issues that made it mm, not the best armored car, but it had good uh, mobility and good um, cross-country features. So it worked well in the early battles, you know, until they got something better on the on the field. So there's a lot of possibilities for these uh, for painting. Like I said, you've got the uh, the North African campaign throughout the Balkans, you know, Battle of France, um, you know, Poland. And they go on and on. I think this uh, armored plate in the front came later, um, probably for the war in Russia and North Africa. I think this was added. So you would have to uh, look at that and do it without this front battle plate if you're going to do the uh, Poland and French campaigns. But again, another winner from Tamiya. Fun to build. Ta-da! <laughs> and we'll see you next time on the next Model Building Workshop. Bye now.